Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack and Turn. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great start to this week. It's Tuesday, so we're going to do a quick book tag. Uh, and we're going to chow down on the burger tag created by Josh at Literary Gladiators. Uh, he was kind enough to tag me in his original video a little over a month ago. And I take his food tags very seriously because I like to eat. So <laughs> I wanted to work up an appetite of books for this one. Um, prompt one, hamburger. If you were looking to get someone to read one of your favorite writers, which of their works would you recommend? Well... In the dark days of 2020, uh, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend P.G. Wodehouse. This is Wright Hojeeb's one of the early novels, which of course has Gussie Finknoddle, whose knowledge of the common newt is unparalleled. You know, drop him in a pond of newts and his behavior will be exemplary, but introduce him to a girl, girl and watch him turn pink, yammer, and suddenly stampede for the wide open stars. So, uh, always a delight. Prompt two, the cheeseburger, a reliably good writer. Good doesn't do this writer enough justice, but in terms of reliable and in terms of being able to like craft sentence by sentence by sentence, like page by page of just really fantastic imagery, thought, feeling, um, intellect, it would be Toni Morrison. Her song Solomon was, of course, you know, in my mind, probably my favorite of single favorite of her works. Prompt three, the bacon cheeseburger, a work that gives you a rush. Well, you know, I mean, you could do a lot worse than James Elroy and The Big Nowhere is one that I think has all like all of the right Elroy things and all of the wrong Elroy things for better and worse. And, and it's why I kind of I, I really gravitate towards this book and I reread it every like six or seven years. Um, it is nonsensical at times. The mystery is just labyrinthine and yet so clearly evident throughout. Uh, but in terms of a different type of rush, in terms of the rush of... You know, there's the rush of a sprawl that's just headlong, but there's the rush where it's a rush, but it's because everything has been like economized and you have this efficiency of language. The Poems of the Late Ta'ang would be an amazing uh, book. And I believe NYRB Classics has come out with an edition of this as well. Um, I read that in, I believe, April, and I'll link that video. Uh, prompt four, the pizza burger. Don't eat the pizza burger. Pizuki, okay, pizza burger. A favorite writer from your home country, born in another country. I thought about this one for a while, and I landed on Isaac Besheva Singer, who was born in, I believe, Warsaw, or grew up in Warsaw, uh, at sort of the turn of the century, and originally wrote, you know, many of his stories in Yiddish, and then would translate them into English later on. Uh, and he's, you know, just presents such an... His stories are set in a world that in many ways doesn't exist, and in many ways stopped to exist, after the Holocaust of the 1940s, uh, 1930s and 1940s. So um, there's this like deep poignancy to reading his stories and realizing that world's gone. Uh, but I absolutely love them. I read I read the full uh, first book of his stories, Gimple the Fool, in, I want to say March or May sometime. So I'll link that as well. Uh, prompt five, Chicken Burger. Instead of reading This Worker Writer, uh, school should be reading this worker writer. Well, I commented, I think it was Brian's tag, <laughs> that the assigned novel at my high school when I was in high school for junior English was um, Atlas Shrugged <laughs> by Ayn Rand. It was the assigned novel. And <laughs> thankfully I was in a different, I was, I was in a different uh, junior English course that didn't have to read that. Um, but having read Passing by Nella Larson last weekend, I realized that this is the type of book that absolutely should be read in high school. It's, it's, it's short, it has great imagery, it has great, you know, um, setting and atmosphere, it is relevant, and I mean, it's just, this is the type of book kids would probably, you know, find much more engaging as a read than whatever nonsense John Galt is uh, going on, you know. Prompt six, The Veggie Burger, a work that encourages plant-based eating. Well. I don't know how many people have heard of this work before. Uh, George R. R. Martin, of course, is much more famous for A Song of Ice and Fire, The Game of Thrones, you know, that, that. Uh, but also then for, uh, you know, there's a handful of people who are real big fans of the Wild Cards anthologies. Tough Voyaging is this crazy set of science fiction stories involving a uh, vegetarian, like, um, zoo, uh, astro -zoo -zoo biologist. He's not part of the Old Earth Ecological Core Survey Seed Ship. So he has like the DNA of all these different animals on Old Earth that he can create in his spaceship. Uh, but he's a vegetarian. And these stories are really interesting and strange and weird. Uh, but they're, they're a delight. That said, sort of the counter to that would be Creepy Carrots. 
This is by Aaron Reynolds and Peter Brown. And this is kind of a disconcerting book in which we have, I mean, what is going on there? But we have, uh, we have this, this guy who eats carrots all the time. And then he starts to like see the shadows of carrots. He starts to be frightened by carrots. And so he thinks he sees carrots. Like he's convinced he sees carrots and it's his bath toys. And it's just this astonishingly frightening book about carrots. My girls love it. Uh, prompt seven, the blue cheeseburger, a pretentious work. And I could think of no one more fitting for this than the persona known as Oscar Wilde. Uh, I read The Critic as an artist early, I believe in January. And I think I mentioned that, that it's very hard to, to at a certain point in Wilde's writing, it's almost impossible to discern whether it's Oscar Wilde, the human being writing this, or Oscar Wilde, the perceived persona writing this work. So, I, yeah, definitely. Prompt date, The Bison Burger, a book that tells the truth about the American West. Well, my Viking portable North American Indian reader would be an excellent example of, you know, a work that does that and, and really gets into that. Um, Tony Hillerman's crime novels would do that as well, set on the Navajo tribal nation. Uh, but my single favorite Western of all time. And we'll see. I'm going to read Epitaph uh, in, probably later this month. But currently my single favorite Western is Bloody Season by Lauren D. Esselman, which is like an impressionist Western uh, retelling of the gunfight at the OK Corral and, you know, the, uh, the Herb Vendetta raid in southern Arizona. And I actually think I might try to get some footage of, like, the San Pedro River and sort of, you know, that area of southern Arizona uh, on a weekend hike. And throw that in with the epitaph discussion or something. Prompt nine, the mushroom and Swiss burger talk about a moldy book that you own and admire. I do not own any moldy books. I live in the desert and therefore it's very difficult for books to actually become moldy here. Like extraordinarily difficult. Even books that aren't well taken care of, there's just not enough moisture in the air for mold to actually occur uh, on, on the pages. Um, they dry out, but they stay dry. That said, uh, <laughs> This felt like the type of book that uh, might work for this description. And that would be First Love and Other Sorrows by Harold Brodkey. And that's because Harold Brodkey's reputation was moldy. And uh, the man parlayed the 10 stories in this and a handful of stories he wrote in Esquire that were published in Esquire that were essentially the same story over and over. He just like developed more consciousness in this same story over and over across I'm not kidding, 20, 30 years. Uh, but you get things like this. For some years now, Harold Brodke has been making one of the great brave journeys of American literature. Uh, let's see, what, what else do we have? Um, I mean, just some of, the, some of the words about who this person was. Uh, we detect the progress of a single faceted tale, souls dangerously alive, people caught in the intimate, grueling ardors of family and self. In the telling, Brodkey aims to separate and refine and chemically analyze those stunning pieces of experience the rest of us have mistaken for ordinary. We weren't all mistaken. This is rigorous and heart-shaking work. Only if it was like thrown at you. <laughs> it is also major evidence of the risks worth taking in pursuit of astonishment. Only to the astonished editors and readers when the book never is produced. Anyways, Prompt 10, The Turkey Burger, a work that encourages a healthy lifestyle. Um, why not Confessions of an English Opium Eater by Thomas De Quincey? <laughs> uh, Prompt 11, The Pub Burger, a 500 plus page book that is filling and engaging. For me, uh, I read this in April as well. It'd be Ovid's Metamorphoses. I had kind of put off reading this because I knew I was going to love it. And I like to sort of have these, you know, the mountains to climb that I know I'm going to love climbing with the, for the first time. And this did not disappoint. It was an absolute delight. Uh, I'm, uh, there's a book I'm going to read later this month or next month that uh, part of is, is sort of like a, it's a novel that retells one of the myths in here and some other works. So I was rereading the portion by Ovid and I was just delighted and it sent me off on a poetry binge last night, not a burger binge. So much healthier. Prompt 12, The Diner Burger, a work that makes you feel physically and emotionally involved. I don't know uh, who else has read this crime novel. It is fantastic. Friends of Eddie Coyle by uh, George V. Higgins. It's a Boston crime novel, and it is just 
absolutely brutal uh, to see sort of like down to their last five bucks, down to their last five days before him to report to jail. Uh, you know, low level average criminals in the Boston underworld. And, you know, just there are no winners in this book. Um, it is, but, but Higgins manages to make the characters feel like you feel their desperation, you feel their loneliness uh, in a very authentic way. And so just a brilliant book and qu a quite good movie. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of Robert Mitchum outside of like Out of the Past, but um, Friends of Eddie Coyle is just a great movie as well. Peter Boyle is in it. Um, Prompt 13, The Honest Fast Food Burger, a work with a great exterior and poor interior. Well, let's talk about this book. That would be the Conversations of Socrates that Penguin Classics produces by Xenophon. And you would think Xenophon wrote the Anabasis, which is one of the great history books. Socrates. Plato writes about Socrates, and Plato's one of the, you know, great Western thinkers. It's got the Penguin Classics imprint with the cool purple bar indicating Greek and Roman classics. And you see that it has Socrates' defense, the apology, the famous apology of Socrates. And then you read it and you wonder what on earth earth is how how did Xenophon write such fascinating histories and then take Socrates and make him the most boring pedant of all time <laughs> um I think in January I'm, I'm kind of thinking of doing like this like uh a couple of books where I, I sort of compare two works I don't know I'm thinking of calling it like jonesing for Janus or something like that I know it's Giannis but um uh I'm thinking of doing Xenophon's apology, the apology uh, from Xenophon and the apology from Plato, and then maybe uh, The Clouds by Aristophanes and getting this like different portraits of, of Socrates or something. So it's a thought. And Xenophon's quite boring as, as a philosophical writer, not as an historian. A Prompt 14, The Shrimp Burger, a lesser known work about marine life. I don't know if it's lesser known because it won awards. But I don't see a lot of people ever talking about it on booktubes. Maybe it's lesser known. That would be Swimmy by Leo Leone. And in part, it's a great message about teamwork, but also in part because the illustrations are just astonishing. Another one of my daughter's favorites. All right. Prompt 15, the slider, whose short works are easy to consume and enjoy? Well, they're easy to consume. Sometimes they can be difficult to digest. That would be Angela Carter, who is a was a masterful writer. Masterful writer. Fairy tales slash short stories that, you know, will, will, will dig into your mind. Prompt 16, what is your favorite kind of burger? Well, I like guacamole bacon burgers. I love wine burgers. Uh, the best wine burger restaurant in Phoenix closed a few years ago, which was quite disappointing. Um, there's also one at Prompt 17 is where is your favorite place to get a burger? Well, if you're in Phoenix, it's the Chuck Box, which is a cash only place in Tempe near the Arizona State University campus. You don't need to go onto the campus, but stop by the Chuck Box. It's excellent. Uh, and they have, they, they have a burger called the Tijuana Torpedo that it's the meat is shaped like a torpedo and then they put pepper jack cheese on it and, um, green chili, uh, Anaheim green chilies on it. It's, absolutely fantastic uh outside of that my other one that i really like is a small like diner style old school one called uh, rds in page arizona so we go to that if we go to colorado or utah for uh like a big camping or hiking trip um we'll stop in page and get burgers and milkshakes there prompt 18 who do you tag i'm gonna tag noah from everyone who reads it must converse uh, I don't think Summer from C Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats was tagged in this, and I don't think Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics was tagged in this, so I'm tagging all of them. Thanks, everybody.